Good morning, my lovely creatives. I decided to create another real-time, beginner-friendly, step-by-step drawing tutorial. And we're going to draw this beautiful lizard on black paper today. It is very exciting. I don't draw on black paper that often, but I always love the result. And it's much easier than you think. It really gives that vibrant color pop effect. So yeah, grab yourself some materials and join in. The materials I'm using today are a sketch pencil, an eraser, and my Faber-Castell Black Edition color pencils. They are pencils that are especially vibrant and meant for drawing on black paper, and the colors are also very much including light colors that are working really well on dark paper. I know it's a little bit hard to see the sketch that I'm making on this dark paper, because the paper is so dark and the sketch is so light, so I have created this a template for you, you can download it for free on my website. Just follow the link that I put in the description. And uh, yeah, if you want to draw along, you can use that to transfer your own sketch onto your paper. You can also find the reference photo there and a list of the exact materials that I'm using for this drawing. Naturally, you don't need the exact same color pencils that I'm using. Um, these are just especially meant for black paper, but you can use any type of color pencil. Um, you could even use crayons. Just remember to uh, start with the light colors and that the black or the darker colors are the color of the paper. So it takes a slightly different way of thinking when you draw on black paper and that's the fun of it. I started adding some color to my paper and I'm starting with this really light uh, greenish blue color, uh, this turquoise color. And I'm just adding some highlights on the paper and I'm just figuring out where these larger scales and what the sort of main shapes are that uh, I see in that photo. I don't want to go in too dark because I want to add in some different colors later on. So I'm having very light pressure on my pencil and I'm just really lightly color blocking out these main areas. And slowly you can see this nose appear and each of these scales of this creature. You can see how uh, light this color blue is in comparison to the dark paper and that's the beauty of these pencils, they're designed to um, yeah, to really reflect the light onto that dark pen the dark paper. I'm not being sponsored, these are just a set of pencils that I bought for myself um, and I quite like them. I would recommend them if you are quite new to drawing and if you're looking for a budget set of pencils. Sometimes I use pencils that I don't really like, uh, but these are very soft and very uh, intense color, which is nice. So you can see I'm just working in sections, adding these almost like squares for these individual scales around the mouth. And I'm slowly adding in some larger areas where the light really catches the lizard as well. In the picture, the light is quite clearly shining from above. So the top of the forehead and the second eye, the one that is a little bit behind the first one, is um, they're very light, light colored. So this is something that I keep in mind when I'm adding these highlights to the picture and it is worth noting that when you draw with a light color on dark paper that you almost have to think differently about the way you apply your materials. Normally when uh, you work on white paper you add the color and you slowly go darker and darker but today I'm working the other way around. So I'm working on dark paper and I slowly add highlights and the dark of the paper is the um, darkest color that I'm going to use for this drawing. I might add a little bit of black here and there to make the paper just a tiny more uh, matte. It has a little bit of a shine to it, which I'm not so happy about. It made it a bit hard to film. But other than that, the black of the paper is going to be my darkest value. So you can see I'm going around the eye now, just outlining these eyelids. Lizards have very interesting eyes. No eyelashes, of course. I'm just slowly giving shape to everything you see on the paper. I um, draw a lot of different subjects and I think that drawing animals is one of my favorites. It's something that I always come back to and every time when I'm 
feeling a little bit lost with my art or when I'm feeling a little bit unsure about the things that I create, I come back to drawing animals and it always gives me my confidence back and my love for uh, drawing. I love being in nature and I absolutely love animals. I always say that I love every single animal, um, apart from maybe mosquitoes, but even those are not too bad. I am... Um, yeah, I'm a huge animal lover. I've been a vegetarian since I was a child. And it all started because I love animals so much. And nowadays it's all more for environmental reasons. Um, I used to have quite a lot of pets when I was a kid. I used to do a lot of horse riding. And if I um, had the chance to have more animals in my life again, I would do so. But at the moment, I'd feel a bit guilty because I... I'm away from home quite a lot and I uh, I feel guilty if they're just stuck in a cage or if you know, there's no one home to look after them. And If I let myself go, I'd have a house full of dogs and cats and horses and goats and <laughs> lots of different animals around the house. Uh, luckily, I live in an area where there's lots of nature outside. Um, I went for a walk only yesterday, a long walk out in nature with my partner and we stopped somewhere because we heard some rustling in the trees and uh, we stood really still for a few minutes just waiting to see if something would come out and um, after a few minutes we saw this group of little I think they were little stoats um, like a weasel type creature really small and they were very playful and they were looking out at us from the bushes and it was just the most magical moment and things like that just uh, Oh, it fills me with so much joy. I really love seeing wild animals. And I've lived in England for quite a long time now. And I always get the sense that there's more wild, wild animals here than in the Netherlands. Um, I have seen some sort of deer and other animals in Holland, but not very often. And maybe it's because I lived in the city. Uh, but even in London, you see so many different creatures everywhere. I feel like animals like badgers are much more common in the UK than in the Netherlands. But I don't know if that's actually true. But to me it always feels that way because they're easier to spot. It's quite fun to have this video in real time. Because you suddenly realize how long it actually takes to uh, make a drawing like this. When you look at YouTube, very very often videos are sped up. And uh, I do realize why. Because there is... Um, it's a little bit boring for you to watch if you fast forward a little bit or if you have this on just uh, almost like a podcast you listen to my voice I totally understand that there's not very many real-time videos that you can watch on YouTube everything is always sped up and it makes it gives a slightly unrealistic expectation of how long it takes to make a drawing And um, I think it's good to realize that it just takes time. And my paper is not too large today. This is an A4 size paper. And the longer, or the bigger your drawing is, the longer it takes. And I think that is also something that beginning artists often forget. And it's a tip that I um, share a lot in different, like, in different ways. Because I think when you're new to drawing or you find it hard to make time to make art, um, Buy a small sketchbook or a small block of papers and um, make small drawings. And you can always go bigger at some point when you're more used to the materials. But start small and then slowly go bigger and bigger the more time you have or the more you are um, experienced with a material. The first time you use a material, it always takes a long time to make something with it and to get used to the process. And the more often you do it, practice really makes perfect. The more often you use something, the easier it gets. So you can see I'm slowly going to the neck of the lizard. I quite like how I'm instantly, um, how I instantly can add almost like a pattern on these scales. I've only used one color so far, this light blue turquoise color. Which is one of my favorite colors. You can see the tape I'm using today is the same, um, same shade. And the only reason I'm using the tape is to hold my paper nice and still for the camera. You don't need to tape your paper. Um, 
at all. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to film without moving things around constantly. And I'm already really enjoying this. I feel like even with one color, slowly this creature is coming out, sort of <laughs> sort of appearing out of the paper. It's almost like, do you know these scratch books? I don't even know what the right name of it is. When I was a kid, I used to do this sometimes, where you had this book and you had to scratch layers away to um, make this picture appear out of the sort of black layer. And then there was something shiny underneath. It feels a little bit like that. It's almost like I'm scratching the surface away and this lizard appears. The neck is quite wrinkly. And I'm going to add a little bit less detail there than on the face. It's a bit out of focus in the photo. And I want the attention really to go to the eye and to the uh, front of the lizard's face. So I've already decided that the neck and the uh, yeah, that part is going to be a little bit more yeah, softly and a little bit out of focus. I recently bought myself a really lovely large box of color pencils. And I bought myself the Faber Castell Polychromal set of 120 pencils, which is very exciting. And the set that I'm using today uh, is also from Faber Castell, but it only has 36 colors. And um, you get used to having all the colors in the world so quickly, but sometimes having a bit more of a limited palette actually works better. And I have talked about this quite a few times already as well. I think having a more limited color palette color palette, so there's a bit of a tongue twister there, having a more limited color palette um, stimulates your creativity in a different way. And when you make a realistic drawing, having the exact same colors is not as important as having the values of the colors, right? So make sure that your dark is dark enough and that your light is light enough. And that makes a big difference to your artwork. Let's have a look at a little time lapse of what we've done so far. I really enjoy a time lapse video. I find it it's almost like magic how suddenly everything looks really effortless. So um, let's have a quick look, see what we've done so far. So you can see all the blues that I started to add, some wrinkles around the eye, all these scales. And now I've started to swap to some oranges and I've started to add some secondary colors to this lizard. You can see I've added some green. And we'll go back to the real-time video. So here I'm still working on the oranges. Orange and blue are very um, contrasting colors. I think they work together wonderfully in this. And that orange color on this uh, black paper almost looks a bit fiery. And I think even in first layer, in you know, just one first layer, it already looks a bit like the sun is setting or something like that. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see I'm going to go over some of the edges with this orange. And I love adding color and I'm never afraid to add a little bit of extra color onto my artworks here and there. It gives me a lot of joy. Um, so sometimes I add a little bit more color than what you might see in a reference photo. It is one of my signature moves is to add all the colors of the rainbow to my color pencil drawings. So you can see, adding some oranges. The video so far is an hour and 51 minutes. And I know I will uh, edit a few little bits out or there, it will definitely be a little bit shorter than that. But I reckon this might be my longest YouTube video ever. My longest real time tutorial. And the reason for that is just because color pencil is uh, quite an slow medium um, in comparison to paint for example when you paint on watercolors sometimes it's quite fast you can fill a large sheet of paper really fast if you wanted to but color pencil every stroke is quite fine and it's quite a considered medium you build it up slowly and it just takes a little bit of time and I would really recommend to, uh, for you to take your time with it as well 
I'm running a long autumn um, color pencil drawing course which starts on the 1st of October. You can sign up a little bit later as well but there are some live sessions and the first live session is on the 5th of October so if you want to join in with all four live sessions you need to make sure you sign up on time otherwise you might miss one. And um, I will teach you all the details and all the different techniques of color pencil drawing in that course. We'll go for a lot of different mediums. And I very often say to people just to take their time for their drawings. And the beautiful thing about drawing in color pencils is you can put it away and pick it up in a few hours time or a little bit later as well. And I find all the little strokes that you make with your pencil almost a bit meditative. When I draw in color pencils I can really get lost in the moment and really forget what's happening in the world around me. And I am... Um, try to distance myself a little bit from the news and from you know what's happening in the world and just because sometimes I find it quite stressful and drawing really helps me disconnect from all the problems in the world and just focus on something positive that gives me a lot of joy and that helps me relax and bringing joy into the world with my art is definitely one of my main goals it gives myself a lot of joy but hopefully others as well I'd like to focus on the positivity with it. I have recently really gotten into um, foraging as well. <laughs> I don't know if you thought that I was going to say that. But I really love the idea of walking around in nature and finding things that you can eat and then pick them and take them home. And there are some strict rules that you have to adhere to when you forage. There's um, areas of the world, lots of areas, even here in England, that are protected that you're not allowed to forage in. Um, you have to make sure you don't pick too much because you don't want to destroy the plants. You want to make sure that future generations or future plants can grow as well and flourish. Um, you have to be careful about what you pick, of course, so you don't pick something poisonous and then uh, harm yourself. And... Um, but overall there's a lot of foraging that you are allowed to do and there's so many plants that you can eat really safely and that are very familiar to lots of us that you don't really that you might not really know about. We have lost so much of our knowledge about plants that we can eat. And I um, recently bought a book. I bought it in a second-hand shop um, which is um, Food for Free it's called. And uh, it's all about foraging and about plants that you can find in England at different times of the year that you can eat. Things like samphire. Uh, it also lists some mushrooms, although I have not tried any mushrooms yet. Different berries, different types of nuts. Um, you know, the things like chestnuts and other nuts. And lots of leaves. There's lots of like salad type leaves that you can eat and wildflowers that you can eat. And it gives me a lot of joy and I've not tried everything yet but sometimes when I walk around if I don't have the book with me I take a photo and I look it up later and then see if I can identify the plant. So at the moment I'm just learning but hopefully I'll get better at this and uh, who knows maybe I can cook a dinner of things that I've only forged some point in the future. So all the little things that uh, that give me joy. So this lizard is quite green, so I am going over a lot of my blue sections with my bright green pencil now. I just start to lighten them up and to make the whole look of the lizard um, much more green. And the areas in between the scales are quite dark, there's a lot of shadows in there, so I try not to fill up uh, the gaps in between. I'm letting some of the paper shine through and that can really nicely show the shadows in between the scales and it's definitely a bit finer than um, a lot of the gaps that I've left so far but I'm keeping in mind that I want to use the black of the paper as my darkest color so I said this already before but this is something I need to keep in mind throughout this entire drawing process the darkest color is the color of the paper I have quite a bright light on my desk. Um, the days already start to become a little bit shorter. And although I still have a lot of daylight in my room, I really like to have a light. But I can see that the right light reflects a little bit of this dark paper. 
it is much more difficult to film than white paper for some reason, which I uh, find interesting. But when I take a photo or a scan of this artwork and then um, uh, adjust the contrast a little bit to make it look as much as it does in reality, the colors seem much more vibrant and the dark is much more matte. So the, uh, the light on my desk makes this look a little bit shiny. I'm using my pencil to add lots of little skills here as well. So I'm going over that edge, those little wrinkles around the eyes. And really slowly start adding more and more detail into the picture. You have already seen a sneak preview of this on that little time lapse that I shared earlier. And now you're seeing it another time in real time. I do hope you're drawing along and I'm really curious to see what you're making. So if you do draw along and you share um, your pictures on social media later, make sure you tag me in it. So use at makings and musings. Um, so I can see what it is that you're making because it gives me so much joy to see everyone's creations It's really the reason why I'm doing this is to help other people on their art journey and become better artists and more confident artists and um, Maybe take their first step on their creative journey a lot of people that I'm teaching Have not been doing any drawing or painting for many many years and uh, I really love seeing how people gain in confidence. So if you have learned something from me, please let me know. And if you uh, are drawing along and you're sharing your artwork, please share it with me as well, because I uh, really love to see that. I remember when I first started to teach and I um, uh, got in touch, or actually through sort of common friends, I got to speak to people who are running a pub in London, the Escape Bar. It's an amazing pub if you're in East London, I would really recommend you check it out. And uh, I was teaching there in uh, a room upstairs in the top of their pub. And uh, the first class I run was mostly friends. And then the second one, a few people signed up. And then the third one, it got a little bit busier. And slowly and steadily, um, this whole sort of teaching art started to grow. And I started to feel a little bit more confident in what I was doing. And um, yeah, it's almost unbelievable that that is now three years ago and that I've been doing this for such a long time now. And of course, then uh, it was the beginning of 2020 and I had to take all my classes online and I started to teach them all over Zoom. Uh, I did make a little YouTube video already at the time, but the uh, that was just a sporadic one-off and now I'm much more dedicated to creating YouTube videos for you. But it's um yeah, it was such a strange time and suddenly... Everyone could join from all over the world and I had people join from India and Greenland and the US and France and like all from all over the world, Switzerland and Netherlands. And um, yeah, it really gave me a very new perspective again. And then now the world is opening up again. I have to reinvent myself again and decide on what I want to do and how much I'm going to teach in person again or if I keep everything online. I'm doing a bit of a mix of these things at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think having to reinvent yourself as an artist is perhaps part of the journey. I would not want to... Well, I don't mind staying still for a little bit. I like sort of times of peace and quiet and calm. But it's also really nice to um, keep growing and learning and trying new things and new skills and I constantly learn new skills if it's video editing or my drawing gets better or maybe it's recording voiceovers or all these things there's always so much to learn and uh, i hope that i'll never stop learning so you can see i'm just slowly adding green and blue to these skills and my colors slowly start to become more intense and it's quite funny if you see the uh, right side of this picture where the colors are really uh, quite subtle. That seemed quite light at the time. When I added that first layer, that seemed quite intense and brightly colored. But now I'm going over each of these skills a little bit more, with a bit more pressure and more layers of color. Um, this original layer actually seems really subtle and quite a lot of the color of the paper, that black shines through still. So I do find your perception of how intense a color is changes as well, the longer you are drawing. Drawing color pencil. I tend to not use an eraser. But I tend to have just really light lines and um, you just slowly change the shapes throughout the process. 
you can erase color pencil. There's a few tips and tricks to how to do it if you want to make changes to your drawing. Color pencil is uh, a little bit more difficult to erase than a sketch pencil, for example, graphite. Uh, but it's not impossible and there's some tricks that you can do to make that a bit easier. And in my color pencil course, I'll go into that in much more detail. Um, but I try generally to just let all the little mistakes be part of that completed artwork. I'm not too worried about um, about little mistakes and I always find that they get incorporated into the bigger drawing and at the end you won't really notice it. So I am for the first time adding some white into the drawing. So the eye has a few highlights. You can see I'm using this white pencil to start adding some highlights. This is quite fun because usually I use the white of the paper for the highlights, but today it's the other way around. And this is the rare occasion that I am using a little bit of an eraser to make this a bit lighter or a bit darker again, actually. But that was a very subtle change. I'm slowly building up the amount of detail that I'm adding to this drawing. And quite often when I uh, make a drawing such as this, I'm listening to a podcast or sometimes I do watch a TV show, but I cannot watch anything that is too um, interesting, <laughs> so to say. If I watch something that is really distracting, then I cannot use it to make a drawing. So it needs to be either a fairly slow documentary or a TV show that I'm familiar with or something that I can have on, on the background and not get distracted by. But for some reason, listening to podcasts or audiobooks is perfect because... Um, it doesn't distract me in the same way. As you can see, I'm starting to add a little bit of this poisonous color green, this really bright green over the edges. I'm adding more and more little details to the lizard's face. It's slowly coming together, don't you think? need to do a lot of work on the eye still and the eye is a proper eye catcher uh, in this drawing. I feel like once you finish the eye suddenly everything is coming together. So I'm using some of my white pencil to add some highlights on that sort of comb shape and on that that nose bridge and the area over the eyes. I'm drinking some green tea whilst I record this. And I never used to like green tea, but I've really gotten to enjoy it recently. And I think one of the reasons I started to like it is because my brewing techniques uh, are different. So I tend to boil the kettle and then wait for a moment, put the hot water in the cup and then wait for a moment for it to cool off a little bit before I put the tea back in. And then uh, not leave it in too long and then take the tea back out as well and not leave it in. And uh, it makes a huge difference. And I suddenly really start to like this tea. I think it also because I bought, uh, actually I was gifted quite a nice brand of green tea. So maybe I should splurge a little bit more and buy some nicer tea bags when it comes to green tea. I, um, I drink lots and lots of herbal tea. I really love it and I like all sorts of flavors. And I usually drink a cup of English tea in the morning, one cup of coffee, and then switch to herbal tea. So I'm using some white to add some extra little skills here. And the drawing at the moment is at this stage where I feel it is coming together. So I can see what direction it is going into and what the look is that I want it to have when it's finished. And I start to already visualize that a little bit. And sometimes that takes a bit longer and sometimes that goes a little bit faster. But it's really lovely once you reach that stage and you know what it is that you are going for in your drawing that stage everything is sort of clicking and coming together and becoming a little bit easier. I really love drawing in color pencils. I use it as a material to make a colorful sketch, as a way to add a little bit of color to an, 
uh, ink drawing or to a pen drawing. I used him to make really realistic animal uh, portraits all the way from scratch or I used him to add a little bit of extra color to my watercolor paintings or a bit of extra texture there. And I just think they're so much fun and really underrated sometimes. When you're a child, you are used to drawing with color pencils, but often these children pencils are really terrible. I remember I've had pencils as a child that you really had to press on so hard and almost no color um, got onto the paper. It just had no pigment at all. And although I really do believe that sometimes you can uh, work with cheaper materials, you don't always have to buy artist grade really expensive materials, especially when you are just starting out. So I do recommend buying things that fit within your personal budget. I do recommend trying out the pencils a little bit first. So most art shops you can try the pencils uh, on a bit of paper. They usually have a set that you can try or ask the people who work there for some advice. And I would also say buy a slightly smaller set of slightly better pencils instead of a really big set with all the colors of the rainbow. The set that I'm using today, I'm not, I don't quite remember what exactly I paid, but I think it was about £20. Um, and it has 36 colors. And there's, uh, I could do with a smaller set, to be honest. I don't think I need all 36 colors um, to make black drawings on black paper. And I have other color pencils that make up for the extra colors if I needed them. And I think that is a really good sort of mid-range budget for good color pencils. I am adding in some more details into the eye. And I already said this earlier that the eye is really a focus point in this drawing. So I want to make sure that it catches the light and that there's enough detail in there to make it fairly realistic and round. And I do find it quite fun that the uh, dark color of the paper around the outside instantly makes the eye feel round. So I don't need to do much shading to create that effect on this paper. When you draw on white paper, you have to put much more effort in to make that eye feel round and a bit more three dimensional. But on this paper, that happens quite naturally. So I'm adding in some reds and some oranges, some yellows, really going for some extra detail around there. And I use my black pencil just to sharpen the edge a little bit. At the uh, end of this video you can see that I added a little fly on top of the lizard's head. Um, that was something that I did the next day. I just wanted to tell a little bit more of a story in this illustration, in this artwork. So I looked up this dragonfly and decided to add that to the drawing. And I was a little bit unsure about it because I was happy with my drawing as it was. And adding something extra is a little bit of a risk at that stage. But I decided to take the risk and I feel it paid off. I feel there's a bit more of a story. Or a bit more of a question. Are they friends? Is he trying to eat that dragonfly? What's happening there? Um, I like the, uh, the mystery in that story. When you work in color pencils, always make sure you have a really nice sharp point on your pencil and it just makes your life so much easier. These pencils are very soft, so they um, sharpen down quite quickly. You can also use a craft knife to sharpen your pencils. I'm still going over all these edges, I'm not wearing any gloves today, so I'll be careful not to lean my hand too much on my existing drawing. I don't want to smudge it too much by accident. I'm just going around and using my colors all at once, adding some blues and greens and extra colors to the artwork. We are about half an hour in, and there's parts of the video that I sped up a little bit just because. Otherwise, it would take a really long time. But you can see how slowly it comes together and how it's absolutely fine to take your time for a drawing such as this. I think I was saying earlier that uh, I recommend starting on a smaller bit of paper so you um, make yourself familiar with your materials and 
the longer the bigger your drawing is the longer it takes but there's also an uh, sort of opposite argument to that where if you want to make a very detailed drawing make sure that your paper is large enough because if you work on a really small paper all the details are going to be teeny tiny and it's going to be really hard to add in the amount of details that you might be looking for and if you work on a larger bit of paper um, you basically have zoomed into your picture and it's a bit easier to add in the details and then when you see a photo of your picture you, or you look at it from a little bit of a distance it looks like a very detailed artwork so there's a little bit of um, two sides to this story it really depends on what you want to go for and what you want to practice if you're really new to drawing I recommend working fairly small but if you uh, are a little bit more experienced and you try to make a very realistic more detailed drawing then working a bit larger um, actually really helps because you don't have to crimp in everything on a really small space and sometimes your pencils are just physically not small enough to add in the amount of detail that you're looking for this was a mistake I made a lot when I started painting at first that I wanted to eat to add in lots of like really tiny people onto like say an A5 size painting and it just didn't fit and my pencils my brushes were just not small enough and it was really hard to you know make my movement so small to add in that amount of detail that I actually wanted in my artworks but once I started to use a slightly bigger paper it opened up the world and it became much easier to add in the detail that I was looking for and when you are a digital artist you are used to being able to zoom in and out onto your canvas and that allows you to add in the detail that you're looking for but as a traditional artist you cannot zoom in you have to work with the paper that you chose from the beginning and you can uh, work on multiple artboards and add in extra sections sort of to the outside of your drawing but you cannot um you cannot zoom in and that's a really big change for a lot of people i think digital artists uh, are really used to that function of zooming in and out and i know that i work digital quite a lot that i really appreciate it when i can do that and sometimes i try and do it on my digital drawings as well i work digital on commission sometimes um, or sometimes I uh, use my traditional artwork and edit it digitally so I work digital quite a lot but my true love is still traditional art I just think there's no better feeling than a pencil on the paper or a pen on the paper or paint on uh, a canvas or paper and the feeling of actually physically making something and I think we spend so much time looking at screens already either uh, our phones or for work or emails or admin all these extra things that we have to do in our lives um, and then we often spend our spare time looking at screens as well that it's just so lovely to have some time where you make something with your own hands and not look at a screen and to have the opportunity to do that is just something that I think is so wonderful and that I try to do as much as possible so um, this is why I love traditional art so much and I also think it has a place to stay i don't think traditional art is all going away i really think it um yeah it has a place a future as well as lovely as digital art can be it will not replace traditional art completely and my true happy place is when i walk into an art shop and i have all these different materials and colors around me especially if i have a little bit of money to spend because going in there and just teasing myself is not always so much fun but i just love art materials and trying out new art materials and i probably have more materials than i really need i try to live more of a minimalist lifestyle and i buy a lot of my clothes second hand i try to um yeah, to live sustainable but when it comes to art materials i just absolutely love trying out new materials and the next thing i would like to do is do more oil paints but at the moment i'm really focused on color pencils so oil paints will have to wait another time and then uh, when i dive into that i will definitely make some videos about it as well So I'm using this really light color yellow now to start adding more scales to the underside of this 
Liqua iguana lizard. I don't really know what it is. And um, on its neck, the skin seems much more smooth. The scales are either much smaller, or the skin is almost like a sort of smooth texture because of the way the light is shining on the animal as well. So I'm making that much more even and leaving out most of these individual scales. And this is also where a lot of artist freedom comes in. So it's up to you if you want to, if you like making these scales keep going and if you prefer um, making the animal much more one color you can absolutely do that. I decided to speed up the video a little bit here just um, because the movements are all very repetitive and I want to make sure it doesn't get too boring for you. So I'm going to add in lots of little details all the way along the cheek of the lizard. Just with small movements, once you find your rhythm, this is almost a bit meditative. So once you find your groove, just keep going and go all the way over your drawing to add these little details. And I used to run a lot of um, color pencil drawing classes every week. And um, they were always an hour and a half. And an hour and a half is sort of enough to make a small drawing. But this was A4 size, so it took me a little bit longer. I also want to remind you that you can be as playful with the colors as you like. I know I'm sticking very much with the sort of natural colors of this animal, with the greens and the blues. But if you want, you can add in as much orange and reds and purples as you want. This is your creature and um, iguanas or uh, lizards can really look different colors depending on how the light shines on them or what type of lizard that we're looking at. And um, this is your artwork, feel free to use your interpretation of the color. And using a different color on this lizard doesn't make it look less realistic. So this is what I meant all the way in the beginning. That the realism has mostly to do with the light the right value of the color, so the, the appropriate amount of contrast and darks and lights that we add to the artwork. So I'm slowly starting to add a little bit more to the neck and I spent a lot of time on the face and most of the detail is on the face of the animal, but I'm now slowly starting to add some more details and wrinkles to the neck of the creature. You can see I tend to make a few sort of strokes and then take a little break and maybe look at the reference picture. Um, this is what I tend to do a lot. And you can also see that the type of strokes I'm using here are a little bit different from on the face. They're a little bit more erratic and a little bit more free. I want that part to have a different type of texture and each animal has a different texture. And I often use the type of strokes that I, um, the type of moves that I make with my hand sort of represent the type of texture that I want to create. So something that feels really hard with edges, would I would use a much harsher stroke than something that's really soft and fluffy, where I use a really soft and gentle stroke. So if you, that's a really good sort of rule to keep in mind that the type of movements that you make with your hand are similar to the type of texture that you want to create. You can see I'm going back to the front of the face now and I've noticed some areas where I want to make a little bit more contrast or a little bit darker. So I'm using my black pen, my black pencil I should say, to add in some darker lines in between these scales and just make some of the lines a little bit more, um, yeah, to stand out a bit more, a little bit harsher. I'm also just blending these scales a little bit. I want those gaps to be slightly less dark than the darkest. The darkest areas are the uh, line for the mouth and the um, pupil in the eye. So all the other parts that have this black in them, I want them to be a little bit softer than those darkest parts. So in between all those little scales, we can see some of the black of the paper. And I'm going over there at the moment to make those areas just a little bit softer because the um, I want to use the black of the paper as my darkest color. So maybe there's some highlights on top of the scales as well. Using my black pen, my white pencil to 
add some highlights in and I'm slowly coming towards the end of this part of the drawing. Remember that um, I really love to see what you make. I have a community gallery on my website as well where you can share your artwork. If you don't want to share it on social media but you'd like to have my feedback you can share it there. I'll be more than happy to have a look at it for you and to see if I'm um, if I can give you any feedback on it. It's a very friendly place where everyone in the community supports each other and is very friendly. So I wanted to give a bit of a light glow around the lizard and I decided against it so I took that off again. Adding highlights with this white pen is almost a bit addictive. It's very satisfying to do. Really makes everything a bit more three dimensional. It's always funny how um, there's suddenly a part where you get really engrossed in the project and where um, yeah, you really get sucked into these little movements and it's so satisfying to do. And I often find highlights are doing that for me. Do you know anyone who has a lizard as a pet? I think they're absolutely beautiful, but they can also be a little bit smelly, I think. Terrariums, I think uh, it's the, the warmth of terrariums that makes them so warm. But I love seeing them. When I'm on holiday in a warm country, you can see them lying in the sun, basking in the sun. I think that's the best place to see them. I wanted to add a bit more color in, so I'm using this really bright orange color to add in some more wilder colors. A little bit more blue. really want my colors to pop. That's the that's the, um, the thing about drawing on black paper is that you want your colors to be really vibrant, to really stand out from that darkness. You could make drawings on black paper by only using a white pen or a white um, pencil. And that's a lot of fun to do. But using color pencil is a lot of fun as well. I changed my camera a little bit. You can see how bright the light is shining. On this paper. You can sort of see it on my hands as well. There's a really harsh light coming from outside. It sort of stops you seeing how um, bright this drawing actually is. So I'm using my yellow. I love, I love adding yellow edges to any artwork. It's one of my favorite things to do. So you can see I'm doing a bit of cross hatching here on the neck, making that texture a little bit rougher. Just having lots and lots of fun with this artwork today. I wonder if anyone is interested to see it as a print. I wasn't planning to. Mostly because it would take a lot of ink to print all this black. And I don't tend to use black paper for printing. I don't even really know if it exists. If you can buy black printer paper, I'm sure it does. But I have no idea what it would look like. My, uh, my art prints are all on white paper normally. <laughs> Actually, doing art prints is not really a big priority for me at the moment. I'm much more focused on the educational side of running making some usings, which means filming art tutorials, doing art classes, running Skillshare classes, doing long courses as well, so including that autumn drawing course. And um, I it always gives me so much more joy than making art prints. I find art prints quite a lot of work for um, very little return, so to say. It was when I run a class, I always kept messages from people of how much they loved it and how much they enjoyed it. And it's just something that suits me personally much better. I think sometimes uh, when people become illustrators, they feel like all illustrators are the same or that they focus on that you have to do children's books or that you have to do... Um, art prints with your own work, but there's so many different ways of making a living as an artist and there's so many different you know, avenues that you could go into and it really depends on what suits you best. So I'm going to start adding this 
um, dragonfly on top of the lizard and I love dragonflies. I think they're just so beautiful. They are such magnificent insects. And now you can see I'm using my Polychromos pencils for this part and I have my cup of tea ready. And I think this is the first drawing I'm making with my new Polychromos color pencil set. And although I have tried them out before, um, like the similar, so the brand of pencils is something I'm familiar with. I think it's the first time I'm using this really big box. So, so making a little sketch, and also realized that and <laughs> dragonfly is so much more complicated than I thought. And to make those see-through translucent wings onto black paper was a bit of a challenge. So that, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do, but it was definitely. A little bit tricky. Also I wanted to make sure that the animal is sitting in the right place so it really looks like the lizard is looking at it. So you can see I'm just carefully making this sketch really gently. This is not really part of the tutorial. I've not added a sketch of this in my sketch that you can download for free. Remember if you want to draw the lizard there's an sketch um, template available for free on my website. I'll put a link down below in the description. So go have a look. You can download it for free in my shop. So I'm going straight in with blue. I'm feeling very confident for some reason. <laughs> I'm going straight in with color and I have a bit of a plan for this dragonfly. I don't really know much about dragonflies, about how long they live. Or I think they are uh, hunters, as far as I know. I live really close to the river, and when I go, uh, with we have a little canoe. If we go onto the river for a boating day, we can. Uh, you often see them fly around. So they do seem to like. Water, they always seem to be close to the water. So this is one of the wings. And I'm using this red orange for the body. And I do like how these color pencils go, um, how clearly they cover the black paper as well. So as you can see, you don't need to have special black paper pencils to make a drawing on black paper. But it does help if your pencils have a lot of pigment and if you can see them clearly on the black paper. If you have a pa if you have really cheap pencils or pencils that are really hard with very little pigment, then um, it doesn't work so well. You need something that is quite creamy, I think. So, you can see I'm just taking my time figuring out where these legs are. This is all still part of the sketching process. What is your favorite subject to draw? I'm really curious because I want to create tutorials that people want to watch and that they like to learn from. So, what do you prefer? Do you like drawing portraits or animals? And then what sort of animals? Like cuddly, fuzzy pets or more scary animals? Something a bit more unusual or um, yeah, something really colorful like this lizard. I'm just curious because if you let me know what you want to learn, I can see um, if I can you know, keep that in mind when I'm creating my tutorials. A lot of people have been asking me about pestles and this is also something that I am planning to include in my tutorials at some point. I've been focusing a bit more on color pencils and on watercolor for the time being. But I think pastels are absolutely beautiful and they definitely deserve a place in my art repertoire and on my video tutorials as well. I just create art that gives me the most joy. Something that, food that in the moment feels right and that I want to create and I'm trying to not think too much about algorithms and what's sort of most appropriate on Instagram and stuff like that. I just want to create things that make me happy and uh, hopefully spread some happiness in other places as well. So this is 
what I am focused on most when I choose my own topics for art. I think if you're not making what makes you happy, then it's, um, it's really difficult to make things that other people are like anyway. So you don't want to make things just for others. I want to, you want to be an artist mostly for your own joy, right? I quite like this stage of this um, dragonfly. I think it looks a little bit like an um, Tim Burton skeleton ghost dragonfly, which I actually think is a lot of fun. So I'm starting to add some more base colors to this creature. And I didn't really know how these pencils were going to react on this paper because this is the first time I'm trying them on black paper. And I feel some colors definitely uh, work much better on the black paper than others. And that's the benefit of having that other set that is meant for black paper, is that you don't have to think about it. They're all, all these colors are really suitable for that dark paper. But in this large set with all these different colors, there's definitely colors that are more opaque or um, that cover the black paper much more than others. So I'm trying to create a bit of an translucent effect for these wings so you can see the body through it I realized it was quite tricky to do whilst also adding in a lot of details I sort of makes me want to draw a much larger dragonfly in lots of details at some point in the future have you ever been drawing insects. Insects are so much fun, they're so beautiful and they have so many different shapes and colors and once you start looking at the insect world as a um, source of inspiration you'll never get bored. There are so many amazing creatures out there. So adding some highlights with my white pencil. White pencil is uh, an unmissable source on, uh, on black drawing paper, of course. I'm thinking about doing Inktober this year, but I'm not 100% sure if I will have the time and what my schedule is going to look like in October, especially whilst doing this long October autumn uh, color pencil drawing course. So it really depends on my schedule. If you want to learn more about color about drawing in color pencils, make sure you check out my website. It's makingsamusings.com and you can find lots of information there, lots of free tutorials and you can join my art community if you're looking for a community of like-minded people who are all learning new drawing skills. I have lots of art tutorials here on YouTube as well. Watercolor painting, color pencil drawing and many many more. So thank you so much for being here. Make sure you subscribe and that you click on that little bell to get updates. I am sharing a watercolor landscape uh, next. I post videos every Monday and Friday and at the moment I'm focusing on color pencil and watercolors. I might branch out at some point, but yeah, make sure you subscribe. Let me know if there's something you want to see or learn. So adding in a little bit more pink. Almost finished with this unusual creature. I wonder what the story is behind these two animals. I think in all reality the lizard is probably going to try and eat the dragonfly but maybe there's a bit more to the story maybe there is some sort of codependence sort of relationship where they look after each other you know like it happens with certain animals who naturally be um, be uh, eating each other but then sometimes there is some sort of mutual understanding where they help each other out I don't know I'm making this up perhaps there's something a little bit more friendlier here than 
delicious trying to eat the insect. So, um, so you can see this is all quite small. I struggle adding in enough detail because the uh, drawing is getting quite small and there's so much detail to be seen on the dragonfly. I like how he's got a little moustache as well. It looks a bit like that. I'm sneakily adding in a little bit more of this blue color to the lizard as well. I'm almost finished with my drawing. And let's zoom out a little bit. I always find that when you zoom out, you gain a completely different perspective on your own artwork. You look at it with fresh eyes and with a different view and suddenly you notice if there's any contrast that's missing or if there's anything else that you want to add. So whenever you're making a drawing, make sure you spend enough time standing up or taking a bit of space from it and not just, you know, look at it really closely the entire time. So there we go, I'm just adding some finishing touches. My name is Irene and with Makings and Musings I create lots of art tutorials and art classes and courses and lots of things, everything related to art, painting and drawing. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. I release new videos every week, two videos a week, full of art tutorials and tips and tricks on how to make your drawing practice better. I really love to have you here. Please share what you've made. I really look forward to seeing your creations. So make sure you tag me in your post and I'll see you around soon. Bye bye.